Welcome back. Episode 139 of Chaotically Intolerant. Was there something big that happened this weekend in the football world? I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I heard something about um, Usher yeah. Usher at a, at a big stadium. I, I don't know. Um, but no, congratulations to the Chiefs. They are the Super Bowl champions, as, as we both predicted and people called us dumb um for thinking the Chiefs are still the Chiefs but they're still the Chiefs I mean we called it we we were calling you had the Chiefs winning by three I had the total points correct I mean we we kind of I it's just whatever needed to happen to happen for the Chiefs happened that you had and and it it does start to feel more and more you know I look if you hate the Chiefs you would have rather seen them win this game 31 to seven. And then you say, well, Hey, we throw our hands up and we say the chiefs are great, but there's just every one of these Super Bowls they've been in has been so painfully close. I mean, even the 31 to 20, I mean, they were down, they've been down 10 points in every Super Bowl, which Mm -hmm. Brady did it twice in his career. Mahomes has now done it three times. And, um, I'm going to ask you, and I'll give you my take. What do you think the, biggest regret as far as plays for the 49ers were in this game? Because there's two that come to mind for me. One, like, one specific play or just overall the way they play call? Because one. I have a big one. Well, maybe I have a, two specific plays. Yeah, I would like to hear yours because I have my answer. Well, I mean, I, I guess you could call this a play. I I personally liked the, the, hey, we want the ball third in overtime because of the new rules. I like that. That's fine. Yeah, I was okay with that. It also, it also depends, I think, on the situation. Like, it was a defensive game, so I think you don't want it third in a defensive game. But if you're a, in a very offensive game and you know both defenses are tired, you're going to go down and score easy, then I would say I want it third. A lot of people would say the, the fourth down earlier in the game. Um, but again, like, I'm not really that, – that's, that's not really a big thing to me. I always say take the points. Um, that fumble, I mean, the, the, the muff punt, the muff punt is the number one, even though that's an unlucky break, that is a Patriots bounce first off. Like, let's say that that is literally like that. When I say that is, sorry, my voice for any listeners, it's a little off. If you think of the Patriots run, that is the Bill Belichickian, Tom Brady, lucky bounce that flips the switch that always would flip the momentum. That is the type of stuff they get. And some people say it's just luck. I think it's partially, again, we, we said this, I think last year, or two years ago, Belichick and Brady are on that other sideline that gets in their heads. Mahomes and Reed are on the other sideline that gets in their heads. If you're in, if you're in punt coverage, like realistically, you should be getting 10 yards away from the football. Like you should be, at least 10 yards away. Obviously you're trying to make a block. I I get it, but you shouldn't be close just in case anything happens. You would rather you, you don't want to take that shot. And I would rather my guy have to make a catch with somebody like a yard in front of him and take that chance versus taking a chance of getting hit by the ball. So I would say that would be the number one. Um, And I, I mean, you could point out any of Mahomes' scrambles, like where was a, where was a spy? On Mahomes, he was running. Yeah, it felt yeah, like in those big moments, he would run every time. He would pick up a run. Where was the spy? Any of those big runs? I think maybe in overtime, I would say is more of the regrettable play. Yeah, I would say. Well, the, the you know, it stinks for the 49ers to think that they were a yard away from winning the game, at least on a defensive stop. The muff punt for me was was number one. That I mean, mm-hmm. I was asking myself how how many muff punts are there that get recovered by the other team in a season. Maybe it happens on average, maybe once a week, if that, maybe yeah. 15 in the regular that's, season. That's probably once every two weeks, I would say. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, you could have fumbled punts. That's, that's, I don't know, that's a little different because, you know, we're running, you're trying to make a play. But a muffed punt, one that hits a player, especially one that hits a player who's not trying to catch the punt, is, it's embarrassing. It's about, and, and I mean, I had flashbacks immediately. I'm sure 49er fans did to Kyle Williams, 2011 NFC championship game. <laughs> remember that in overtime muffed a punt, uh, resulted in losing the NFC championship game to the giants. And he was really, you know, vilified. He got death threats. It was, it was bad, you know, and I don't, I don't know if this 
going to happen to this guy. I forget him because it wasn't McLeod, right? It was his teammate that it that It, it was technically, yeah. His, it looked like McLeod just made a stupid play trying to recover the puck. Trying to then pick it up, but it was already a live ball. Mm -hmm. So he had to pick yeah. it up, but he probably should have fallen on it instead of picking it up. So that one was inexcusable. And then, as I just said before we started recording, the say what you want about Shanahan maybe not going for it on fourth down in overtime, but – Chris Jones was unblocked. And so if you think that the if you think luck was on the 40 uh, on the Chiefs side, you're absolutely right because first Dre Greenlaw, have you ever seen that? Ever seen a guy running onto the field and his and, Achilles snaps and and tears his Achilles? I mean, yeah, you hear about stuff like that could happen in practice during the week, but in a game in that moment was and you wonder why Travis Kelsey only had one catch in the first half and eight in the second half. Big part of that absence of Dre Greenlaw. But then the other thing that hasn't been getting talked about, I didn't even realize this. I went back and watched um, some some video. Uh, John Feliciano, guard for the uh, lineman for the 49ers. I think he's a guard. He was out. His replacement, uh, whoever it was with McKivitz or one of the – whoever took over at right guard blocked the wrong guy in overtime. The, the, the analysts have been breaking down this protection. Chris Jones, Chris freaking Jones was unblocked coming off the edge on the third down in overtime. Now, a lot of people were saying that Ayuk would have been the second read. Kittle was the outlet, and I guess it would have – I guess the first read probably is Samuel or Jennings. I don't know. But that is a colossal fundamental mistake from the supposedly great offensive coach. And, and here's the even worse part. They went on Twitter. I think, that, I think it was Monday morning – and John Feliciano, like per who who was a lineman, who was a guard for the 49ers, mm -hmm. he came out and said, um, uh, I know you all know, or I know, I know you all, or what the fuck? How, how did he word this? I know you know all. So you should know that that's not Colton's guy. And there was, it was a tweet about, it says Colton McKivitz as one of the best players in the game lined up in front of him, and he decides to give him a free rush to Brock Purdy. Um, and then who responded? Who is this? Oh, and then Feliciano also said, a quick chop is not needed if the guy that was supposed to block him blocks him. So they're, like, taking this shit to Twitter now. This is, it, I mean, it's embarrassing. Like, they, you let Chris Jones run free in overtime of the Super Bowl, and now you're taking it. It's it's doubling down on the complete embarrassment and, and ineptitude. Like, that's not something you do, especially to yeah. a team. This Maybe. team, this 49er team that won five Super Bowls in the 80s and 90s has almost turned into the Bills and Vikings, the way that they have that they have broken Found the hearts lose. of their fans. Ten-point lead in two Super Bowls. Um, obviously, they had an almost come back against the Ravens. I mentioned Kyle Williams. Um, the 49ers lost a game, a championship game at home in overtime. There was the Richard Sherman interception that stopped them from getting back to the Super Bowl in 2013. Um, what about the NFC, the drop and pick? The drop the pick, game right. Against right. The Hart, Jawas, Jaquaski Tart. Tart, yeah. It, right. Uh, Purdy tearing his UCL <laughs> last year. Who knows? Maybe they beat the Eagles if he's healthy. Maybe not, but... Um, they have. It's, it's not a thirty-one to nine game or whatever the final <laughs> score was. It's not with right, right, yeah, thirty-one to seven, right, right. And the 49ers, I mean, there was one playoff game back in '02 where they were down thirty-eight fourteen and they won because there was a controversial play where the Giants got flagged for an ineligible man downfield, but he wasn't ineligible and it should have been pass interference. Since that moment, twenty-one years ago, 49ers have turned into. They've kind of. They're kind of like the L.A. Dodgers, right? And, and, like, they've had these great teams. They're in it almost every single year. And, like, the Dodgers have one fake title to show for their champion. And I hope that's all it ever is. Uh, and the 49ers don't have any Super Bowls, any Super Bowl wins. I mean, they have three appearances. And this one is – this one's definitely worse than the the one in Miami a few years ago because that was – that was a third and 15, and they say Bosa was held. But they gave up 21 unanswered there, and – Jimmy Garoppolo as your quarterback. I mean, this one, it felt like they needed to win. And I'll, I'll tell you another thing, it, because as you were watching this game, and I was, as I was watching this game, that 49ers had so many chances to make this a bigger lead. And they got an interception of Mahomes right out of the gate in the second half. And they had the ball in 
uh, Kansas City territory. And it reminded me a lot, and poor Kyle Shanahan, in the 28-3 to Super Bowl when Shanahan was the Falcons' offensive coordinator. So it was 28-3. to The pa- Patriots scored a touchdown, missed the extra point. It was 28-9. They onside kicked it. Falcons recovered it at the 41-yard line. First play, they got nine yards. They were already in field goal range. They went backwards, did not score. Then later in the game, they were up 28-20. They had the Julio Jones catch. They were at the 23-yard line, went backwards, did not score. This was just, they stopped running it for a while, again, as all coaches seem to do. They, yeah. I mean, Shanahan, in my opinion, Shanahan didn't really do anything to shed that moniker of, of you know, choker in the big game. Honestly, I, I thought that I thought it was just very typical of what we've seen from him and his teams. Sorry, one second. I something's playing music. I don't my my Mac just randomly started playing music from the <laughs> just from Apple Music for some reason. I don't know why. Uh I, I didn't hear what you said. Continue. Well I said that I, I think that the fact it you know that the Falcons, just like when they couldn't score when they were in field goal range and, and all they needed was three points, and the 49ers took over near midfield, and I thought that Shanahan didn't do anything in this game to really shed that label of himself as a playoff choker, basically. And they got away from the run for a little while, and they just kept – I mean, you hold Kansas City to three points and a half, and you're getting good field position, and you get an interception to start the second half – and you can't do anything like you, you don't deserve to win. And again, this Chiefs defense was just just too good. I mean, it was incredible just how they dominated for really the whole season. Yeah, um, the the running. I think the running thing was the biggest, my biggest problem. They ran it thirty one times in total versus throwing it with thirty eight times. I, I don't. I really don't understand it. I. It just makes zero sense to me the absolute refusal to run the ball no matter what like and and it's not like they were running i mean you have fucking christian mccaffrey (laughs) how are you not running him 30 times 25 times that and and brock purdy like he didn't lose the game whatsoever for for the 49ers i don't i don't think he did at least i mean he did he even have an interception he didn't even throw an interception no he had a touchdown Right. Um, no turnovers for Purdy. McCaffrey um, had 22 rushes, 38, 38 pass attempts. I mean, why are you throwing the ball 38 times in, honestly, what was a defensive game most of the way? And they and, were pressuring in the second half. Purdy was under a lot more duress in the second half. Um, and they, you know, once again, Andy Reid, just the way Bill Belichick used to, adjust it at halftime. And the other coach, who Kyle Shanahan, think about it now, he's been in three Super Bowls. Lost to Belichick, he's lost to Reed, and he's lost to Reed again. And all three games got outfoxed and outplayed in the second half in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, the expected points summary. So I'm looking at this, the, the offense, defense, and special teams. They were around the same offense, around the same on defense. So offense, Chiefs were 3.4. Uh, 49ers were 4.6 on defense. The Chiefs were 4.6 and, and 49ers 3 point, or negative 4.6, 49ers negative 3.4. The biggest difference was special teams <laughs> and, and, you, and that fumble. I mean, you attribute it to that because the Chiefs were 3.39 and the 49ers were negative 3.39. Like that was clearly the biggest impact whatsoever. I mean, those, I guarantee, or you can literally point to three points. The Chiefs got those three points that won the game off that off that muff punt. Um, and Juwan Jennings, I, I, w- I want to say something about Juwan Jennings. J- just because they lost, what a fucking game from this guy! Yeah. Passing touchdown, rushing touchdown. Who who was the last? I don't even remember the last one to have a passing and a rushing touchdown in a Super Bowl. I don't. Uh, receiving, passing, receiving. Sorry, well, passing Nick, and receiving. Nick touchdowns. Foles. Nick Foles. Nick Foles. Was the Nick Foles. Big Dick yeah. Nick, Eagles legend. Um, yeah, right. Philly special. And Juwan, there was a, a point, and I was looking on FanDuel during the game, um, Juwan Jennings was the favorite for MVP, actually, because he had more passing touchdowns, I think, than Brock Purdy did. Because I, I guess Was it all game or was it throughout, like in the middle of the game? 
Um, I know it was late in the game. I'm sorry, Purdy did have a touchdown pass, well, but he threw it to Jennings. So Jennings had was involved in both touchdowns. And it was it was later in the game. It was at some point in the fourth quarter, I think, when the 49ers went ahead. You know, this really was like a Patriots game. And then Moody, we didn't talk about Moody. He hits the 55-yarder, which, of yeah. course, Butker then has to break, right? That's just like the Butker rules. Butker also, that, that thing got like 10 feet off the ground. At well, and it went through. You had two hands right here. It went right through it. Moody's yeah. extra point, it finds a hand. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That, you know, there's no, there's no, you know, games aren't fixed. They're not rigged. They're not, you know, God is not up there pulling strings, but some days you just, it is, it is just, it feels like it's written on the wall somewhere that it just. Why they would rig it for the chiefs, but why would you rig it for a team to go back to back? That's less money when it comes to merchandise. Like how many chiefs fans are going to say, Oh, I already have, I already have a shirt from the last two. Like, it's fine. Like, I, I don't care. Like we won it last year. I'm just going to wear the, wear my 2022 shirt. Just finance fiscally. And it's San Francisco, much bigger market. If you have a San Francisco winning the Super Bowl, that's just a bigger market. You get to put them on the, I don't know what, probably, <clears throat> probably Sunday night football next year to open the, open the season because of the fucking Brazil game. Don't even get me started on that. The, yeah, I don't want to, the, the stupid Brazil thing. Um, but I'm I'm going through so both teams, ironically, both teams, their first drives of the half were turnovers. They ended in turnovers. The 49ers sorry, say that again? The both teams, their first drives of the half. So the 49ers started the game with a fumble. Right, right, right. That's and right. And then the Chiefs yeah. started a game with an interception. Yeah, started the second. It, it felt like the momentum because the Niners were really moving the ball down the field uh, on that first drive. Like they were humming and it looked all right. Like they're, they're going to do it this time. Like they might actually do it. And just right there, it felt like it stopped their offensive momentum already. Well, yeah. I mean, th- like I said, well, so we forgot too the chiefs fumbled in the red zone, which could, you know, mm-hmm. it's easy to forget that that Pacheco fumbled yeah. in a three, nothing game. And that's what led to Kelsey, um, committing elder abuse on Andy Reid, which, right? If they didn't know each other, that's assault. But they do know each other, and it's football. It's totally okay. Um, but, again, would would Brady have ever done that to Belichick? Or would Gronk have ever done that to Belichick? Or would, you know? Gronk um, wouldn't. Brady would have. I think Brady would have. Cause not we, to we, Belichick. Maybe not to Belichick, but he would have done it to somebody else. Well, he's, he's he would have done it to Bill O'Brien. Stats. Yeah, he did do it to Bill O'Brien in 2011. He had a little one with McDaniels, although who wouldn't want to yell at that guy? But I just, you know, I mean, Kittle wouldn't do it to Shanahan. Um, It just, it just adds to the the fuel that people have against Travis Kelsey. I I think I don't understand. First off, the just the complete heel turn on Travis. I mean, what three months ago, people were still like revering him. They were like, this guy's awesome. This guy's cool, blah, blah, blah. And it's I, I, the Swifties. I can't tell you how much stuff I saw on TikTok and Instagram and threads and, and, and Facebook about how now Travis Kelsey is an abuser. He's a domestic abuser. They're like, I've been in domestic abuse situations. I know what it looks like. I'm like, uh, really? Like, are we going there now? Some people, Some people are calling him a racist now. I mean, what, what is this where we're going? It literally the heel turn like that. I mean, come the fuck on. It's football. The guys like Andy Reid clearly was like, yeah, we're good. Like that, that wasn't even an issue. He said he loves the passion. He, and he was like, yeah, it's my artificial hip. Like he just caught me off guard for a second. I, I know like there was no malice in that whatsoever. I genuinely think it is like women just don't know how men interact sometimes. Like that's just guys. I mean, obviously you're heated. That's a heated moment, but like, that's just guys being dudes. Like you yell at your boy and then you usually end up laughing about it in the end. Um, Obviously if the chiefs lose this game, maybe that moment is not looked as good, you know, in, in history or it's looked at differently. But I mean, if anything, it's, it did somewhat, somewhat ignite something because Travis had a really big second half. Yeah. Tra- I mean, Travis Kelsey, like the thing is, he's what, 34, 35 years old too. I mean, this isn't like a young player having a little bit of a, 
you know, rookie moment. I mean, this is this is a veteran guy. So I, I guess I get it. I don't think it means that Travis Kelsey's like an abusive or terrible person. But again, like I said, I just don't think you see a lot of other players that would do that. Yeah, uh, I I think it just uh, it depends on the rapport. And I think as we get further away from Patriots Brady, because Bucks Brady wasn't as like he won the Super Bowl. Obviously, those teams were really good, but he didn't seem as like emotionally in it to where he was getting as angry because Patriots Brady constant. He's a crybaby. He's a whiner. He's he's this. He's that. And now Mahomes is getting it for honestly, like Mahomes is. I would say he's actually pretty good. Like he, he had one moment really like one that the moment this year, but before that, can, can you really think of a, a true whiner Mahomes moment? Like these guys always make faces. They always, you know, they go, Oh brother, like that, that call sucks. That's whatever. But like Brady was consistently yelling at the reps. Brady was consistently um, getting angry with his, with his players and his coaches, especially the younger players. So we're forgetting what a whiner really looks like. And, and I, I know it's his passion. Like that's, that's what makes these guys good. Michael Jordan was a fucking asshole, but you know what? He yeah. won, he won four, four straight or no, he won six, six, three or six and seven years. Um, so it makes him great. Like this is that passion is what makes these guys great. And sometimes it is just misconstrued as being an asshole. But, like, I think these guys, like, we're not in the locker room. We don't know what these guys are actually doing. And and I, it's a lesson. I think it's – nobody's going to learn a lesson from it. But it is a lesson in, like, don't make a comment on, like, somebody's, like, personal – or their personality or, or something personal about them until you really know who they are. Because we don't – I mean, we don't know shit. Like, the one I, – I saw CJ Stroud sitting with the Kardashians, which – that's the one where I'm like, I think they've put enough of their life on out there. I can make a comment on the Kardashians. And I was like, CJ, please do not get involved with the Kardashians. You have a promising career coming up. Like, please go away. Like, stop. But, I mean, he's got to learn, right? The guy's got to learn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing, you're, you're right about the point you made about Kelsey, that we, we don't know the people. But, you know, I was thinking about that little flap that Mahomes and Kelsey had with Justin Tucker before the AFC championship game. And my comment after that was because Tucker was just, I mean, Tucker's a good, a good guy. He's not trying to, you know, maybe he's trying to get under their skin a little bit, but there's it's a no, little gamesmanship. I think it is a little gamesmanship. And, and Tucker, you know, he, he obviously is, I think the best kicker of all time. And he's also, you know, he, he wants to win, but that whole moment showed me just how seriously the chiefs take winning. And it was the yeah. same thing with Brady a maniacal, focus um mm -hmm. that they have and that is just what you, you, Novak Djokovic great example I mean talk about intense to a degree we just can't even comprehend um yeah. to have a level of greatness so um that's that's part of it and then so the other thing with the Chiefs just in general here is we can talk about Mahomes and Kelsey and Reed is kind of like your we'll, we'll just compare it to Brady Gronk and Belichick maybe right yeah. and then you, but you don't think about and you we talk about Chris Jones too but you don't think about some other elements like they have maybe the second best kicker of all time right I mean Butker drills a 57 yarder he's been I hate to say it the guys he's, you know he's not more crazy. than Vinny he, Max, he you know he's like Vinny. another what's that he won't pass Vinny Butker will never pass Vinny in my opinion Vinatieri oh yeah well I'm talking about he's also current. up for the Hall of Fame next year as well yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying all time. I'm saying the second. Well, maybe I said ever, but I meant to say currently the second best kicker. And yes, Butker also was in the news for a lot of the. You know, he was in that Cole Beasley camp about the, you know, Corona stuff. But um, he, you know, it's now he has the record for longest field goal in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, he had to take that away. It's like right. The Chiefs have to have every record. Um, and then you got Legarius Sneed and Trent McDuffie, probably the best one two cornerback punch how about that play mcduffie made deflecting the ball in the Which end zone also we can we can make a call back here mcduffie was taken with the pick i'm, I'm pretty sure traded. with the pick tyreek that they hill. traded yeah. ty for or they traded tyreek hill away tyreek hill was one and one with super in super bowls with the kansas city chiefs um they are two and oh without him the kansas yeah. city chiefs are yeah so 
and and also Mahomes, this was the year this is the year that Mahomes didn't have any sort of cap movement. He didn't have really couldn't do anything because of all the money that they have. So they're gonna lose some guys on defense, but we have to remember they're gonna be looking for a number one wide receiver. And honestly, what receiver wouldn't want to go there? Like if I think any receiver on the planet would say, Yeah, I would I would have Patrick Mahomes as my quarterback, especially coming off back to back Super Bowls. Yeah, there's that that scary thought about, you know, you go back to New England when Brady was winning Super Bowls with kind of unheralded receivers, and then they got Randy Moss. Now, they didn't win any during the Moss era, but obviously they put together the greatest regular season of all time, and they, the, at the time, the most points ever scored, I think it was like 589. And there's always that question of whether are the Chiefs going to go out and get a, you know, big play guy, you know, a big vertical, are they going to get a Stefan Diggs or something? And um, the thing is, you know, the chiefs, I think are, have about $24 million in cap space and the two biggest free agents are from their defense, Chris Jones and Snead. And my hunch is they'll bring back Chris Jones. Probably. Um, I don't yeah. know about Snead. If they'll have enough room, <laughs> and said the Colts would be interested. And, and then there's some other guys that if, even if they bring back just one of them, there's a lot of other key free agents like, uh, Willie Gay and Drew Tranquil um, that are going to probably get pretty good deals out there in the market. And um, I, like, I don't think any of the, I don't even think if Chris Jones and Snead left that you, we would still be like, all right, well now the chiefs are done. Like, I mean, though their defense may not Absolutely. be as good next year. They might give up 30 points and in a game at some point, but they're not going away as long as you have those three guys, but it just helps to have all those other stars in place. And um mm-hmm. And it just, I, I almost postulated this, you know, I was watching, I was like, are the 49ers, do they almost have too much star power on their team? Because some of those guys, it felt like didn't show up. And Samuel got hurt. Kittle didn't have a catch in the first half. McCaffrey had a good game, but he didn't take over, you know? I mean, they, yeah. they, we talked about the Niners, they were, they were favored. They're already the favorite next year. I mean, it, like, but they're not, those guys don't seem to just show up in the big moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's it, it was crickets. I mean, from a lot of the guys like Bosa, Bosa didn't have a horrible game by far. Like it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't fantastic. You know, I mean, it wasn't. I wouldn't say it was super encouraging um, in my eyes. Like, and and I think he's actually been he's been kind. Of, that's kind of been his issue where he doesn't really show up in those in those really big moments. Well, and it's just that. Also, did they use those guys enough? Like, where was Brandon Ayuk? And they, yeah, it just—I don't know. I, I just felt like they didn't adjust. And I, I just came across a thing on Twitter, and this guy Nick Wright is a total clown. But it just he's just a Chiefs up. fan. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. It's you know, um, I think he'd still be a total clown if he wasn't. Uh, but apparently, Kyle <laughs> Uzcheck, who went to Harvard, by the way, I want to point out, Kyle Uzcheck went to Harvard, and I don't know if that catch was really a catch that he made. In the was the fourth quarter overtime, like he reached the ball out. So we were talking about the Zay Flowers thing when he reached the ball out. Uzcheck did that to try to get the first down. That almost cost him a catch. They're lucky they didn't overturn it. But the reason I brought up Kyle Uzcheck is apparently he didn't know that the overtime rules in the playoffs were different. He thought if he scored a touchdown, you won the game, which is what it was until the Chiefs beat the Bills, right? So they changed it because yeah. of the Chiefs. And maybe that type of that that mental lapse or whatever maybe that just said something about the 49ers preparation i don't know that was what they were speculating here on this yeah that's clip. completely unacceptable if, if especially I for a harvard that. guy and a 11 year yeah. veteran of the league that and, is and a few of them mentioned i think well cuz uh, i think shanahan said something or they said something about we weren't like super prepared for it but i think it was maybe taken out of context Something about that. But I know the Chiefs guys said we had meetings every week about it. We were prepared. Like we were, we knew what we were going to do. If we won the toss, we were deferring and then we were going to go for two on if, if necessary, which I don't know if I love that. I mean, you got to, you got to see how the game's going. If your defense can't get a stop, like then, yeah, you say, okay, we're going to go for two. We're going to try and end this game Um, because we're going to lose no matter what. Well, yeah. And again, like we said earlier, I'm fine with them the Niners taking the ball first. Cause if they do get a touchdown there yeah, and they even could have gone for two, there's nothing to say that the team that scores first can't go for two. I mean, it's very dicey, but then if you get it, you know that at, at the absolute worst, you're getting the ball again. 
Yeah. So it's interesting. There's a lot of you know strategy, but we don't. We're not going to get a lot of opportunities to see this because this is just a postseason overtime rule. This isn't the regular. But if you remember, yeah. the, when, when they added the the old, the new old or old new one in 2011, and it was Tebow through the touchdown pass, that was the first time we would have seen it, where both teams would get the ball if one team kicked a field goal. That then became the regular season norm. I don't think you'll see that this new one become the regular season norm, but I, it wouldn't shock me. Well, there's one thing they need to fix, and and exactly. I really hate this is the second drive will go on no matter what. Why the I, I could understand the only reason that we really have a clock then would be for commercials, for, for the NFL to be able to sell more ad space. Because why even have a clock at that point if if it doesn't matter? You know, time really doesn't matter. Um and I guess like you could say for halftime, but then just go to go to a modified college rule. The college rule although it sucks because it takes away the possibility of having a 75, 73 game like LSU and Texas A&M did a few years ago. But I think it's at least a little better because you're, you're going from the 10 and, or what is it? The 10, 15, something like that, but just do different turns except do full drives instead of, you know, Oh, we're, we're, we're going to say this is a quote quarter because I was screaming, screaming at the TV because all my money was on the chiefs. I, I every bet I made, it was going to the Chiefs because I was like, the only one I didn't was Debo Samuel to win Super Bowl MVP because I was like, they're going to get him involved in the pass and the run, and I assume they're going to run a lot. And obviously we mentioned about the the um, Super Bowl MVP running back. Hasn't happened since the 90s. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but all my, all my money was on the Chiefs, and I was like, T- call a timeout, call a timeout, call a timeout. I was like, why aren't you calling a timeout, Andy? Call a fucking timeout. And it wasn't until the next day when I was like, okay, this is actually the rule. And I was like, that is so stupid. Like, you're not, you're, you're saying time doesn't matter when it really should. Like, you should try, have to try and win it in that overtime period. Like, that's, I think that's a part of it that makes it more exciting, too. Because having a two-minute drill, you know, or, or maybe you have, like, ten seconds left and you have to score at the end of the first overtime or you lose, no matter what, like, that's that's a little more exciting to me. Yeah, that's a good point. I never really thought about that, how it just goes to double overtime at the end, right? It'll just... literally, and and obviously, like, if you don't, if, if, you know, it's the third drive, and what, you're, well, then you're tied, and then it doesn't matter anymore there. And maybe if it's a fourth drive, then I guess that's when time starts to matter, but how many drives are you going to get in the, in a 15-minute overtime? Well, it's not 15 minutes anymore. And the other thing was, so I... You know, the NFL no, it's, is, it's 15 now. It's a know, full quarter. No. In the playoffs. Uh, oh, wait. I'm looking at the – I have the game book open, so I'm going to double check that. Uh, you're right. I didn't realize that. I, I didn't realize it went – It both drives took up the entire quarter. Okay. Yeah. So in, in the postseason, it's 15, right? In the regular season, it's 10, but it can end in the tie. Yeah. So that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never, and I actually never realized that. It was 15 because I, I, it, you know, you figured if I knew it ended with what, three seconds left. Um, yeah. But you're right. There's shit. Well, the thing is, uh, it's harder to probably pass that through the competition committee for the postseason. But I, I going to really, say it's not fair, which like I, I, I like the, the fairness of everyone getting the ball, like both teams getting the ball. You give them a shot and then you say, OK, whatever happens after this is sudden death. That's fair enough to me. Like we, it doesn't have to be, you get as much time as you want just because it's a second drive. Like if your defense lets them run 10 minutes off the clock on the first drive of overtime, this isn't the first drive of the game where time feels like infinite. This is the first drive of overtime. Like you better get a fucking stop. And if you're giving up a 10, 10 minute drive in overtime, that's insane to me, no matter what. Yeah. The 49ers drive went, 738 and the chiefs drive went 719 but um yeah i guess the only way to do it would be to to have a have a clock but it doesn't become an issue until both teams have had the ball as you were saying yeah and then if you get into a at any point after that i guess i think it's all sudden death right it's a field, field goal can win it as well right well yeah yeah, I'd have to think about it. My brain's too scrambled trying to come up yeah. with the scenarios, but I get what you're saying, and it's 
there's only been a couple of uh, double double overtime games in the playoffs that I've seen this century. Um, the Ravens beating Denver in 2012 was, I think, the last one, and Delhomme to Steve Smith, ex clown in the 2003 divisional round. Um, one of my favorite games I've ever watched: the Panthers and the Rams. But it was uh, so it was headed to a double overtime, and I just want to throw out the name Nicole Hardman here for well for two reasons. One, apparently his wife is close with Taylor Swift now, right? Somehow he, and, and, but, uh, so he's probably part of that whole, you know, like he, he's benefiting more from it than anybody else. Second of all, he was a jet to start the year and got cut and new England, my God, new England used to bring back guys all the time. They even brought back coaches during the season. They brought back Josh McDaniels after the Rams fired him following the 2011 regular season he came in, he put a, and, and because they were playing Denver in the divisional round and, um, who he had been fired by and they put up 45 on Tebow and the Broncos and um, the Chiefs brought in Eric bien to speak to the team yeah. even though he's not a coach there he was let go by Washington they bring back Nicole Hardman you know they will pick up other teams trash turn into their treasure last year Kadarius Tony now I know that Chiefs fans were hating on Tony because he had a rough year but he had a big hand in them winning the Super Bowl last year and yeah. here's Hardman who gets cut by the Jets, you know, I mean, the nerve of the Jets to cut anybody really. And he ends up back on the <laughs> street. And it, it just, you know, we saw Deion Branch come back to New England after, you know, later in his career. It just, it starts to feel like, well, it was once a Patriot, always a Patriot, once a Chief, always a Chief. It just, it, because play, people just, that's where they're going to have the most success. So they're going to come back. Yeah. Um, course, I was, I mean, I was, at, oh, I guess I guess if we we're at the quote halfway point, we can talk a little bit about the halftime and all the extracurriculars. Um, we both got the the guests right. That was pretty cool that he brought all those guests back. We, we both got yeah. Alicia Keys and Ludacris. Um, but I guess for all the men, if you're listening, uh, Blake Lively, hot, definitely definitely hot. Um, yeah. I, I saw I saw her with, with that hairdo and what she was wearing and I I gasped I'll say that I gasped she was she was very attractive um and and the Super Bowl commercials I would say they I I think the the Super Bowl commercials like the top was really really good with uh the Dunkings commercial with Brady and Affleck and all those right. all of them that was awesome I think oh if you if you took the average it was pretty meh to me like overall not a ton of them stood out to me uh the nfl play or born to play one that they hit every single time like whenever they do it and whenever the nfl does their commercial that hits 100 percent, no matter what every single time that doesn't miss and then the arnold schwarzenegger danny devito one too that one was really really cool they they need to be in more movies together yeah yeah, they were in a movie called Junior, where Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. was pregnant, um, as well and as twins. twins. I think they did. Twins. Yeah, twins. yeah, they were they were in Twins. Yeah, um, are they really I making I... a movie? Are they really going to make a movie out of the State Farm agent thing? Because they're talking about it, and I'm like kind of curious. I'm like, they're they're like really hyping this thing up like it's something real. I hope not. I hope not. It's been <laughs> harder to watch the Super Bowl commercials. I mean, I used to love them. I think. You know, there were a few decent ones. Um, nothing, nothing was that amazing, in my opinion. And there were some serious commercials. There were some downers that weren't fun yeah. to watch. Yeah, I, I was like, come on, guys. What are we doing here? Yeah, Just stop. Yeah. <laughs> Even the halftime show, I think, you know, it was it was nice. I'm not big into that. I, You know, like I said, the Super Bowl is so commercialized. And you want to enjoy the game part of it, but it feels like it gets overshadowed. And that's why the AFC and NFC championship games are the best. And if you can ever go to a game, I think it would be a much better experience to go to an AFC or NFC championship game than it would yeah. be to go to a Super Bowl. Um, Which I got kind of uh, torn apart for that take on, on social. I was like, and, I, and I'm sticking strong to that because like this Super Bowl was too. energy wise. I feel like it was one of the best, like, especially towards the end of the game. I felt like this was very good. This was a great Super Bowl. But, like, if this game happens in, like, the AFC Championship game or, like, the conference title, it's like, oh, well, this was, this was like, exciting, but not enough offense. Like, that, you could easily point to that. You could be like, the, the game started out really slow, so half of the energy is taken out. Like, 
there's so much more when it comes with with the uh, you know the the conference title games especially because they're at home like they have a home crowd and especially when you have them in like kansas city the like the loudest stadium like they're never going to host a super bowl in kansas city as long as they have a you know it's not a dome they never will and that would suck that does suck because that atmosphere that they bring but i can guarantee you that you're not getting that no matter what the the super bowl it's just i mean half the people are in like suits like or that like uh uh pull over corduroy or something like that. Like that, you know, they just don't care. They really don't. Yeah. I know the tickets are so expensive. So a lot of the people who go are going to be celebrities or, you know, very corporate people. So, I mean, they're expensive to the championship games too, but no conference championship games. That is the moment. And you have, you still have a big trophy presentation after it's the last mm-hmm. home game of the year for a team. And it's, uh, and uh, a lot yeah, of these teams have seen each other within the past two years as well. So they're right. more familiar. Right. There's a more natural rivalry oftentimes in a championship game than there would be in – like could you, you could have division opponents play – like the yeah. 49ers played the Rams. Of course, the Rams mm-hmm. don't have any of their own fans. But still, but there was – you know, they had a conference <laughs> championship game. And I remember the Ravens Steelers had, had an AFC championship game. Yep. Um, Colts Patriots, so, how many times? Colts Patriots, even Ravens Manning Patriots. Brady, not even Colts yeah. Patriots. How many yeah. times do they have that? I mean – and and what what NFC AFC rivalry do we really like strongly have like Steelers Cowboys maybe like is that but there's no yeah, but it, there's no juice behind that that's no if anything it would thing. be like it would be like if the Giants and Jets played it'd be more for the cities or, you know I mean I, I some of the Giants played the Patriots you had a rivalry the second time because they played the first time but. For the most part, you're right. You're right. It'd have to be kind of two rival cities. Like if the Eagles played the Jets, maybe you kind of have well, like Eagles Oklahoma. Patriots. That was a big one. That was Eagles you know, Patriots. Philly and sure. Boston. Right. Right. Philly and Boston. New York. Boston's always going to sell. I, I mean, back in the in '94, right? It was San Fran and San Diego, NorCal, SoCal, kind of. Okay, maybe you can sell that. But, um, but speaking of that, 49ers. I mean, now they're on three decades without winning. Yeah. They win five in 14 years, and now it's going to be 30 at it's, least. This is – they're like the Patriots. It, it is it is insane to me, the the cycle that we're seeing. Like you got – like in the 80s and 90s, you had those 49er teams that won five titles, and now like they just went to pretty much nothing after Steve Young. Like obviously they've been to Super Bowls, but they still haven't got there. And now we're seeing what the Patriots – are, are going to be for the next whatever years. So they just get these, obviously the Niners were blessed with two quarterbacks, but they get these like generational, like monster monument type of guys to come in and then they just leave. Poof. They're gone. Yeah. I mean, the, the Packers have been lucky. They basically had three starting quarterbacks since the early nineties with, you know, Favre, Rogers and Jordan love, but even the Packers in that time have only won two Super Bowls, you know, and over three in, in Favre that only one. I thought Favre won. Because I know they beat the Pats. He didn't win another one. He won one. <laughs> he went to two. He went to back to back. Lost to Denver. Rodgers only ever went to one, which is stunning. Yeah. And obviously Jordan Love. This was his first year starting. So, you know, you you can be even still be uh, blessed with great quarterbacks, and it doesn't guarantee you. But in the case of Mahomes and Brady, you're blessed with the best ever. So, yep. And and one of the best coaches, one of the best tight ends. So it, it's. Um, the question I have is just, you know, the, the AFC may be loaded with really good quarterbacks, but it just feels like, you know, the, the, the problem with the, during the Patriots dynasty was no AFC team that didn't have Peyton Manning or Roethlisberger could stand up to them. And really Roethlisberger couldn't because the Patriots beat him three times, all three times they played in the playoffs. So it was really like Peyton Manning was the dependable one that could yeah. beat them. But, um, you know, I don't know if Lamar Jackson can beat Mahomes and the Chiefs. I don't know if Josh Allen can. I mean, they're zero and four. It's Burrow. It's, it's Burrow. Burrow or or the Colts are two and zero against Patrick Mahomes in the regular season. Two and one in the regular season overall. Right. The Colts are, are Mahomes beaters. They're they're world beaters right now. They are, but Mahomes you got them. They're, they're they are game. on their way up. And I, honestly, I on Monday I was having the you know I was not feeling good on um Sunday night and you know going into Monday and um I was like you know uh I think I should watch the 2013 AFC wildcard game 
just to yeah, just and I sent it to my buddy who's a Chiefs fan. I was like, I just want you to remember your roots. I want you to like humble you the morning of winning the Super Bowl. Because I was like, man, what could have been that? That was like my like, what could can you imagine Andrew Luck and Patrick Mahomes going to battle in well, in the AFC? Yeah, Andrew Luck's last career game was, was the twenty eighteen playoff game, right? And it was in the snow, and maybe the, maybe that's the passing of the torch that we're looking is. for. <laughs> maybe it is. Um, and and uh, but I wanted to bookmark something too. Oh, I was going to say it actually. Um, uh, it because we were talking about the muff punt earlier. I don't know if you remember in the 2018 AFC Championship game. See, this would never happen in a playoff game to the Chiefs or the Pats. Edelman looked like he touched the ball and it went right oh. over his thumbs. Yep. But it was Edelman, so of course he didn't mess that up. Yeah. Of course. Now he did drop of a pass. He got that. He literally later. got that millimeter that he needed. Like he was yeah. like just below it. He did, and a few plays later, he actually had a ball bounce off his hands that was intercepted, but. He didn't muff the punt, at least. So yeah. he dropped the pass that turned into interception. Fine, that's going to happen. But um, I just it just jogged my memory when we were talking about the play earlier. But yeah, and and I had heard something that I, I don't know where I heard. I think it was during the broadcast, but that Tom Brady actually literally said to Patrick Mahomes, "Like I'm giving you the keys now." You know, uh, it, and and I, it's like you're the dynasty. And it, it yeah. I believed before the year that this was going to be the year we had a repeat champion because Brady was out of the league. I told you Brady was the yeah. reason we didn't have teams repeat. He did it, and he wanted to preserve that all the way through his career. And this first year he's out of the league, it, it's only fitting that the new Patriots would be the first team to repeat since 2003, yeah. 2004. Well, and, and this is the definition of a dynasty as well. Like now we are in it. Three and five years is – well, actually, three yeah. and four years, really. That is the definition of a dynasty. And if you look three at it, I five. think three and five. Yeah. Five? Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Never yeah, mind. Never 20 mind. and 21, they didn't win. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when you look at, like, Mahomes' numbers right now, and I, and I know, like, Brady played in a different era, obviously, for the first third of his career. Um, he's on pace for, like, like it's crazy. He's on pace for like a hundred thousand yards or something like that. If he played for 20 years, like he's like borderline hundred thousand passing yards. He's already, I don't, again, I don't know what the specific numbers are. I wonder if I can look that up. Well, apparently the, uh, the thing I was thinking of Brady told Mahomes that after, uh, I think it was after the 2019 or 2018 AFC championship game in early 2019. So he may have said it a few years earlier, knowing it was going to happen, and and it did. Yeah. Here we go. Um, Mahomes, so I'll read off these. Uh, obviously, he's played in 14 playoff games. Um, Brady's played in 48, which is holy shit. <laughs> before, before Mahomes, the next closest guy was Montana at 16. Like, it, which... No, not 16. 16. Is it 16? Uh, what? P playoff wins? Playoff game. Playoff games. Uh, for 16. For small, small. Oh, I guess. Well, they didn't play as many playoff games, I guess. No, I'm talking uh, about Montana. Well, Montana won 15 in his career. Montana was 16 and 7. He played 23 games. 23 games. Okay. Um, but still the next closest guy is 23 and you have 48 playoff games. That is crazy to me. Um, yards, where is yards passing yards? Yeah. Mahomes is at 27,000 passing yards right now. And he's at 92 games. Um, and Brady finished his career at 89,214. Like he's, he is on his way to possibly being the first 100k passer ever and and to see like also the crazy thing about and and i don't want this to sound like glazing i mean i think that's crazy if if somebody says you're glazing just for talking about the super bowl champion quarterback um he's already has ownership in kansas city like he's, he owns a part of the royals um i think he owns a part of his wife's sports league his his wife's uh professional soccer league um which again, let, let's for all the guys listening, Brittany Mahomes, yes, absolutely, great, great swimsuit, <laughs> great, great uh, Sports Illustrated thing. That was that was just fantastic. 
Um, but he's like at 28, the amount of stuff that he's accomplished is insane. I would love to see, because there was an interview with Brady. I think it was like in the Randy Moss era and they were talking to him. They were like, you've won three Super Bowls, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, but like, is this it? Like, is this, is this all that there is? I would love to hear Mahomes' thoughts right now, like a one-on-one interview with him and just see like what his thought process is at this very moment. Is he like thinking, is that all there is? Is he like, there's so much more, like I'm, I'm so excited. Or is he kind of like, yeah, like we won three. I'm, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm feeling fine. Yeah, I don't know. Are you talking about that that um, 60 Minutes interview Brady gave back in, like, 05 or something? I think so. Where, yeah, he – yeah, well, and, and I think Brady would probably agree that, you know, it was that 10-year gap between his third and fourth one that really probably got him feeling alive again. Like, and, and really, you know, when he when – he, and then he, the seal was broken again, beat Seattle, and then he wins – four out of the next seven between the Pats and the Bucks. So yeah. it's just weird. You know, if you think about it, his Super Bowls all came within what, like an 11 year span, but then there was a 10 year gap or nine year gap in between or nine years where he didn't win. I don't know if that's going to happen to Mahomes again. I, I don't like, I guess the yeah, question that's, you know, that's, that's my question too. Well, I guess what would be the odds of that? I don't know. I wish, I wish sports books did like, future futures you know they do futures but they don't do you know like multi-year future like will this guy win a you know in the next three years i guess it's just too much liability far out but the odds i don't know i mean it, um but if you're the my question too is if because the afc has cowered to these two guys for over 20 years what do you do if you're these other teams how do you if you can't get the next patrick mahomes and let's be honest lamar jackson is not Mahomes. Josh Allen is not Mahomes. Even Joe Burrow, who can beat him and is really, really good, is probably not Mahomes. So knowing that, is that can these teams build a good enough team and a good enough brand to to beat the Chiefs? Or is it just is it mental? I mean, I don't know, you know, how these other teams are going to catch up to the Chiefs without yeah. another Mahomes, basically. Because that's football. You know, you, you can't really win. I mean, there's no, like, there's no 2,000 Ravens that, that are going to come in and beat Mahomes with a Trent Dilfer. Mm-hmm. I mean, you it, that's just not how the game is today. That just this average quarterbacks generally don't win Super Bowls because there's too many good ones out there. Um, and the fact, and I, I started doing some comparisons, by the way, to the last time we had a repeat winner when Brady had won three and four years and it felt like, well, no one else can win. At that time, I think after the 04 season, there were five active Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. And right now there are five active Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. And I think there were five other quarterbacks at that time, like after that season who didn't retire, who had started a Super Bowl. And I think there are five other Super Bowl uh, quarterbacks now who are active, who have started Super So it's, we're in this, this, uh, you know, time where these other quarterbacks need to need to get one because their careers are going on and how long, how many chances, you know, because the Bills may not, you know, they may have to make some moves. They may take a step back. The Ravens. I, I recommend it. I still recommend do a yeah. very soft, very soft rebuild with that Bills team. Yeah. And, and I guess so, you know, it's not like just because Allen's going to play for a while, Jackson's going to play for a while, that they're going to have – the same opportunity every year to beat them. And so what do you do? How do you, how, do, how do the Ravens take that next step? Right. We know the Bengals can beat them. And if they get healthy and they get Burrow back, right. There's always, a, they're, they're the team maybe, but I don't, I don't know. Like Cleveland's got a great defense, but is Deshaun Watson or Flacco or whoever going to be enough? Like Fla- Flacco's got like two to go, which how, yeah. how he won, how he won, uh, what's it called? The, the comeback player of the year to me is crazy. Like, I don't, out of there was three guys that were leading for it. It was Demar, Flacco, and Baker. How how do you give it to Flacco out of that three? Like, you could make an argument for Demar because the uh, criteria on the AP comeback player of the year award is very fuzzy. You don't. It's just you come back from extraordinary. Uh, what's the word? Um, adversity. Adversity to 
and I looked up the Wikipedia definition, this changed. <laughs> the Wikipedia cha definition for uh, Comeback Player of the Year changed within, I don't know, like a couple weeks because I looked it up at the end of the regular season and it said extraordinary adversity coming back, you know, from extraordinary adversity to extraordinary, pl extraordinary play. So to me, that tells me Baker Mayfield or Joe Flacco because you can say what you want about DeMar, but his play was not extraordinary this year. Like it just, you, it just wasn't like that is like statistical fact. He played like six or however many snaps, like he was a third stringer. I think basically that's not extraordinary play. It changed when I looked it up on Wednesday before NFL honors, it said extraordinary adversity to play a snap in the NFL. So then yeah. I was like, if that changed, then they're giving it to DeMar no matter what. Like, hey, they definitely changed it to prove to people, like, it's not it's not about your play. It's just about that you came back. But then to give I, it to Joe Flacco, of all people, I well, mean, come yeah. on. Right. Baker, yeah. Baker, won, Baker went to the playoffs for a full season. Joe came in, what, eight games, seven games? Like, I get he came off the couch, but Baker was Right, benched. he came off the couch. That's the – yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Hamlin came back from – nearly dying so that yeah. as far as the adversity nobody can match that that's uh, number one like I, I don't nobody can tell me any differently that is number one yeah yeah um but uh that's that's the question that these teams are gonna have to ask themselves and and in the nfc i don't think the gap is nearly as big in the nfc i mean the 49ers won it this year but the lions had them on the ropes it's hard not to, to sit back and think that the lions could have maybe won this game Maybe Dan Campbell be damned, right? He, yeah, he would have. You know, he may have done he some. Maybe he goes for it on fourth later and right earlier in the game, and he gets the touchdown. Like, or right, or maybe. And I, and by the way, I was shocked when the 49ers went for it on fourth and got the first down. I couldn't believe they passed up the tying yeah. field goal. And I thought at that moment that that was Kyle Shanahan shedding that label of like being too conservative. I said that's. But then Moody misses the extra point and. It, it's weird because it worked out for a little bit when he missed the extra point because then the Chiefs would have had to go for it on fourth and goal and they might have scored a touchdown, but they might not have. And then it actually happened. Same thing would have happened again. They got down there at the end when, you know, they kicked the field goal to tie it, send it to overtime, but they would have had to go for the win. But again, like, I think the Lions, they beat the Chiefs week one. I know that Kelsey was out and Jones was out. I get that. But the Lions would have had confidence. They would have been playing for a city. I mean, really, that that really cares. Yeah. And people would have been really in love with the Lions and rooted for them, I think. I think it was harder to root for the Niners because <laughs> they've been here before. They've been, like I said, the L.A. Dodgers of football. It's it's just it, – it didn't have a lot of feel-good elements to it, the Super Bowl, no matter the what. The other thing – and this is this is very small. The other thing is that we wouldn't have a red versus red. I cannot stand when the Super Bowl color wise when it's red versus red. Like you need some sort of variation when it comes to color. Like because then all the graphics right. they make everything's red. Everything like it would have been so nice to have red versus blue. Like that that would have just been so much better. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, branding and marketing and color, that's a big part of sports. And, I mean, Eagles, Jets would be tough, right? You'd have two green or Ravens, Vikings, yeah. it'd be too much purple. I, I get it. Um, but especially because we already had this Super Bowl matchup four years ago, right? And it was, it was kind of cool then. And, by the way, fun fact, Chiefs, all three Super Bowls that they've won, they've been an underdog. I don't know. How the Niners, how in the world the Niners, I get it though. I mean, because the Niners were close to winning the game, but three times the Chiefs have been an underdog, then they've won the Super Bowl. The one time they were favored, they lost to Tampa. So, it's... and actually, I'm going to go back. You said something very early. You said about how the Chiefs are, have only won Super Bowls in close games. What, yeah. What other, what other, dynasty that we yeah. can remember yeah new england won, won six, in close games yeah six super bowl wins all by 10 or less i mean yep. actually all all of the brady super bowls in new england were decided by 10 or less and, and yep. nine of them were decided by eight or less i mean even the rams won like to kick the late field goal to go up 10 it's funny because the patriots they had some blowout blowout playoff wins along the way i just i would 
I don't know. It just it just makes it so much more painful to see those teams win when it's like this. You'd rather see like the Seattle Denver Super Bowl where there is just no doubt left as far as who the best team was. And I th- but I think those w- them winning those close games, you can attribute that to their regular season struggles because those Patriots teams it was at, at least at the second half there was always a struggle early in the year the brady it was always a struggle right like there was always the oh this year they're done like there there's no shot right you know? and and even with tampa they th- i think they were 7 and 5 7 and 5 games. finished 15 and 5 yeah they fin- yeah i mean like they they were not good for most of the year i remember they lost that game to chicago on on thursday night and brady's going like this yeah you know to the screen he's like what it's third down right like fucking tom brady forgot what down it is like have yeah. you ever seen that in in like with like good players you you see that with like the guys that aren't so good and then they make a boneheaded mistake and then you blame it on then you think about that guy's name for the next 30 years because your team didn't win a regular season game but I think it really there really is something to not blowing teams out like you always see there it always happens where a team will have a miraculous regular season they you know they blow everyone out and then they just come out flat that very next week and yeah it's the because Ravens. they're not battle tested like you're really not battle tested you need to i i almost i almost can look at teams and if they play well against the good teams but they keep it close with those bad teams that is more battle tested like you want to beat the ones that you want to beat the ones that you're going to want to beat later but Sometimes you are a little more focused on the other teams, but you're not taking it completely away from your attention. But, you know, those lesser teams are going to give you fits. Like the fucking Colts beat the Chiefs last year in the regular season. Like that, that's a big thing. <laughs> that, that should be talked about more, I think. Um, that's why I wasn't sold that the Ravens were going to win this year because they were just they, – they just didn't play a lot of close games. I mean, I think they had – Yeah. Only three of their 13 wins were by – one score and then even one score wins are not all created equal. You could win a game by eight points because you let a team back into it at the end, or maybe, maybe it was four wins. I think they beat Arizona because they let them back into it. But point oh, being the onside kick. Yeah. 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 I think it was Arizona, Tennessee. They beat by eight in London, the Rams on the punt return in overtime and um, the Bengals by three early in the year when they were up 10. But point being is you're right. I mean, the chiefs played, the Chiefs didn't really blow too many teams out this year. I mean, I think they blew out the Bears was the one that came that to was, mind. That was the Taylor Swift game. That was the first the, one. The Taylor Swift game, and they, and they you know, kind of, like, they, they stormed back with a big second half to beat the Raiders, but they shut Denver down. I mean, but, like, you're right, it was different. This was a, a scrappier Chiefs team, in a way, and um, – because we're used to seeing them blow teams out and put up these big offensive numbers. For the last couple of years, that hasn't really been as commonplace. You know, they've played a lot closer again. Because last year, you were saying they were playing with their food a lot. They, Houston took them to overtime last year, and the Broncos almost beat them in Arrowhead. And it's like maybe there's just something to that. And teams feel comfortable with their backs against the wall. Mm-hmm. So um, there's just yeah, you always just the media falls in love with the sexy teams and the teams that have the big point differentials and, you know, 49ers. Yeah, and the 49ers kind of that team. I mean, they, they look like they flipped the narrative in the playoffs a little bit, winning those three-point <laughs> games. That almost felt more like they just underachieved to play those close games than it was, like, battle-tested. I don't know. Um, but... And, and we'll end on this, because you were talking about quarterbacks as well. I'm jumping. I'm like, now I'm starting to, like, process things that you're saying more, and I'm getting more things when was the nfc ever the quarterback heavy league like the the quarterback heavy side because in the 2000s it definitely wasn't i mean you had montana in the 90s and 80s but like besides that like it it always feels like those quarterbacks are much more on the afc side yeah i mean i wouldn't say i I, the afc of course having the big three for all those years man and Brady Roethlisberger. Just they're they're the more talented conference quarterback and like quarterback development. It feels like. they are they are, and the NFC still won had a stretch where it won more Super Bowls because maybe the teams were better. They weren't as dependent on those quarterbacks. You know, obviously the Giants won two with Eli. 
you mean look at some of the NFC quarterbacks that got to the Super Bowl in the 2000s, and yeah. it was – now I love Jake DeLome, so I'm not going to talk bad about him. And McNabb is pretty good. But, you know, Matt Hasselbeck, Rex Grossman. Yeah. Um, you know, and the, it, it, but then you had a few years when we had, you know, Breeze and Rodgers and, again, Eli. But then, it, you know, Colin Kaepernick, Russell Wilson, Cam Newton had a great year, Matt Ryan. I mean, good quarterbacks, but then you know, Foles, Goff, Garoppolo. Yeah. Um, so you're right. They've had good – They, I think what it is is – and this is the reason there's been more parity in the NFC is they've had – it's spread out more evenly. And there's yeah. been a lot of very good quarterbacks in the NFC. But there's been great, a few great quarterbacks in the AFC. And that's why it's played out that way with these, you know, Super Bowl appearances. Because you even, you think about even in the 80s, you, you had Marino, Elway. Um, hell, I mean, you could, maybe you could even throw Ken O'Brien in there. Like, you know, just, and he obviously was probably more of a mid-tier quarterback. But like Jim Kelly, that, that's another one. I mean, this goes back years and I, I probably couldn't go too much into the 70s. But I mean, Terry Bradshaw, Johnny Unitas, um, it's going to be really hard for me to do that. I don't know too much past the 80s. So, it's yeah, it's just interesting to look at the the patterns that w- continue over um, the entire span, you know, expanse of the league. Yeah. Um, but luckily, we don't have to wait too long because we don't have any more football until August. We don't have to wait too long for another sport because pitchers and catchers report yes. tomorrow. Yes. Or yesterday, if you're listening to this, uh, they reported on really Tuesday and Wednesday. I think the Dodgers and the Padres reported today because they're going to be playing in Japan to open the year. Um, I think right. next week, next Thursday, we're going to talk coaches coaches and free agents, I guess. That would probably be a good one. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a plan. Um, and then maybe we can do a little draft as well, maybe the week after that. Um, and then we can probably start getting into baseball because I think that's when some of the later free agents are going to come in and sign. Yep. I was on a flight back to uh, Sarasota yesterday. Mike Elias was on my flight Orioles GM. So I know spring training is right around the corner. I already have my tickets for February 24th. The Red Sox are coming to vault or uh, Sarasota. So I'm, I'm ready to go. I have been slacking a little bit with the Red Sox, like the past couple seasons, but I'm like, I mean, this is not a great year to get back. Although Theo is back, the, that was that was the big announcement. I even mentioned it with Leighton, who doesn't know anything about baseball. But I was like, Theo Epstein's back. You have to mention it. Uh, but I am mildly excited for baseball season because you never know. That's it is the one sport. Like everyone, everyone knew it was going to be 49ers, Chiefs, Eagles, or possibly the Ravens this year, and that's that's pretty much what we had. But baseball. Hell, 2013 can happen again, right? Well, in 2023, Rangers, Diamondbacks. So, was, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that someone can. This this uh, year, though, the Orioles. I mean, at least you can be excited about the I, Orioles. I, I hope so, and I hope we get to la- we we get to laugh at some uh, Dodgers shot. What is it, Schadenfreude, or whatever they call it? You know, and that they can fall flat on their face. That would be a fun thing to root for. So, absolutely. And then also, if anyone's interested, there's a women's professional volleyball league that started. And I did a video on it on Instagram. I love watching volleyball. Like, it's like, it's more of a fringe sport. But like, especially if you've ever been to a game, and I recommend anyone go find a college game or something. Um, it would probably be weird if somebody just randomly showed up to a high school volleyball game, if you're an adult. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a fun sport. Um and I, and I recommend it. It's pretty cool. There's a team in Orlando, so um, and women's sports. Like, I think this is gonna be a lot better than the WNBA. Like, this is one I wanna because the WNBA. What are we doing? It's it's just not it's not up there with the NBA, in my opinion. They gotta lower the rim. Like that's that would be awesome because then you can really get them dunking. Because you need dunks in in any basketball. Um, you do. Yeah. Anyways. Um, Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Um, We're going to do free agents and coaches next week on Thursday. But before that, we'll see you on Monday with someone else. I don't know who. Um, But, yeah, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next or on Thursday, Monday. It's a weird ending.